What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Zero to Diamond podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Carruth. I'm on a mission to help reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry by helping you master your skills on the phone, conquer your fears, and changing your mindset. Now, let's get into the show. Okay, what is up, guys? So here's the deal. My guest this week, Chase Mayer, he didn't have a good internet connection, so he he couldn't join us. We tried a couple times and it just didn't work out. So um, I'm just going to do a live Q&A coaching session right here and now uh, on the fly for everybody. Um, I just went, you know, switched to free for all my coaching. So that was about a week or so ago. And so I'm sure there's a lot of new people in the program. So I don't mind going live a, a little more frequently just to answer everybody's questions and stuff because I do get a lot of emails and a lot of messages and it's really hard to get to every single last one of them. So I feel like this is a good way for me to, uh, you know, to just to reach back out to you guys and answer questions and what's up guys on Instagram. And just make sure you guys are getting taken care of and have all your questions answered. Let me... Oh, you're welcome, Kelly, for making the coaching free. Absolutely. Let me check the group right quick and make sure I'm all good here. I know you guys are busy, like running through your days and all that stuff. Yeah, here we go. I know you guys are busy, like running through your days and all that stuff and, and got a lot going on. Just If you have a quick question, just type it in. I'm going to answer it right here and there so that everybody watching you know, can uh, can hear the same answer and maybe can help them out the same. I'm going to give it a second. I'll let some more people come on Facebook. Um, just kind of chilling for a few minutes, see how many people come on and if anybody has any questions for me. So how my day is going today or a week, I should say. So today I had two closings. I got three listings. I got a uh, um, I had, a, uh, I did a session today, like a live call session with everybody or most of the agents here in my company. We did like a little class on cold calling me and another agent, my broker, we all did cold calls in front of, front of all the other agents and answered questions and stuff. It was really fun. So Blake videoed that we're going to have that on YouTube pretty soon, like in the next week. It's really, really good. You guys are going to like it a lot. Uh, let's see. You got a question on Instagram. I noticed you do a lot of showings. Do you prefer those over open houses? Don't do a lot of open houses. And here's the reason why open houses just aren't like a big thing in my market. If I was in a market where open houses was like a must and everybody, you know, all this, and I started losing listings because I'm not doing open houses, then I would absolutely start doing open. I would be the open house king. You know what I'm saying? So, but it just depends on, you have to adapt to your market. Open houses just aren't a big thing down here because most everybody's out of town. And so I don't do a lot of open houses. Yeah, I prefer to show property because I'm showing property to a buyer that might buy something versus people just kind of looking around and just curious of the listing, which that happens with showing property too. But um, I just don't get a lot of enjoyment, I guess. It's not real exciting to sit at an open house and, uh, and, and, and like, you know, kind of be committed to sitting there, right? Like I, I've never really been, I've never sat duty in my office because I want the freedom to be able to go wherever I want to go anytime I want to. Like if somebody calls me, I want to be able to just go, right? So let's see, do I prefer to call just listed or just sold? I'm finding calling just sold has a cheesy transition. Hey Daniel, what's up, man? Good question. So I don't think that, uh, I don't think that it matters. It's just, for me, it's the same exact thing. If I call and I say, Hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but there's a unit listed in your building or a house for sale in your subdivision. I didn't know if there's something I could do for you versus, Hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but there was a house that just sold right down the road from you. I didn't know if there's anything I could do to help you today. To me, it's the same exact thing. Now here's the difference. Like whenever you're making your calls, as you're making your calls, you should you should really tweak and adapt your your script as you go. Like if you're making the calls and you're just not feeling it and you want to switch over from something that's just listed to something that's just sold, do it. 
Um, I'm always changing up halfway through. I'm figuring out it, it'll take me a good 10 to 15 calls before I actually kind of figure out what the mood is of that particular group of owners. Right. So normally it'll take me a good 10, 10 calls, um, 10 or 15 calls before I actually kind of hit that right reason of calling and start getting the right reactions that I want. So I think that's pretty key. You know, it's kind of tweaking what you're saying as you're going. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that call session this morning was really cool. I only did, I think, three or four calls. You know, it was just to teach them like a number one, like the phone's not going to bite. Just make the calls. And two, just to kind of give them an idea of how what my demeanor is and how my tone is and how fast to talk and all that stuff. What up, Zach Manick? Let's see. He says, agreed. Consistently adapt and evolve. Yeah, dude, every call that I have, I'm trying to adapt. I'm trying to figure out like every call I make, I'm trying to tweak it because I want to I want to figure out. I'm just trying to figure out like what exact tones and what exact voice speed and what exact you know, accents and in emphasis and different words and, you know, all that stuff combined really, really makes a big difference. So I'm always trying to tweak it. I'm always paying attention to exactly how everybody's responding to me. If they have a warm response, I'm looking for that warm response every time, you know, I'm trying to talk very calm, trying to make them calm, so on and so forth. Let's see. Daniel says, thank you. You're welcome, bro. Chena Lee Thompson, where do you find your numbers to do cold calling? Do you think door knocking is effective? Excellent question. Thank you. Um, yes, I think both are effective. I think anything that puts you in front of a, a live prospect, talking to them, having a real conversation is super effective. Some people really like to door knock. I've never been a big door knocker. I, I like cold calls because I can sit in my office. I don't have to go anywhere and I can call hundreds of people right there. Um, so I think cold calling is much more effective. But um, door knocking, anything that puts you in front of somebody talking to them one on one, I think is super effective. So do it. Right. So where do I find the numbers? Red X. To me, Red X Geo Leads has the best quality phone numbers. Um, if you uh, you can get a discount on them, if you mention my name, call them up and mention my name, you can get the two hundred dollar startup fee waived. But the thing is that there's a lot of companies out there call call reality resources. I've heard that they're pretty good. I don't know that I haven't really used them, so I don't really know what the deal is with them. Mojo, I've used them. They're not as good as Red X. I'll tell you that. And the way I used to do it was I used to do white pages. I used to look them up by hand. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Christy used to do it for me. She used to look up phone numbers for me on Google and white pages and stuff. And that's how we used to find numbers. So it's come a long way. Thank you for the question. Jimmy Kim, is there a way to do one on one with you? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not like I'm open to it. I'm not like offering it publicly at all, but. If someone really wants some one on one, you know, then, you know, we can arrange something. So, Jimmy, if you're if you're seriously interested, just shoot me a message and we'll figure something out. If you really are interested in that one on one is really tough for me because, guys, look, I'm a full time real estate agent. Um, that's the difference in me and all the other coaches. A lot of them, a lot of them are just trying to coach right? Or they've never sold real estate or they used to sell real estate, right? So this is my way. This is my system to do it this way. Do it for free. Give you guys everything I got for nothing and, you know, teach you guys everything I know. And that way, if I'm, if I'm doing it for free, there's not a lot of expectations on each side. I can give you everything I got. And if you don't like it, then it's like, okay, it's free. Right. So you can take a lot of what I do, mix it up with what you do and go crush it. You can take everything I do and do it to a T and go crush it. You know, you can learn everything that I got and say, I don't like any of it and go away. But here's the difference. Zero to Diamond is 
is a mindset, right? It's a mindset that everything in real estate is a win-win. You have dual purpose, have more than one purpose for everything you do. Um, value uh, relationships over transactions every single time. You want long-term relationships. Whatever agent has the most relationships with property owners owns all the market share in that in that market. Period. That's all the future. That that agent has all the future earnings in the market, and they're going to win. Um, it's a mindset. You know, losing deals are great because um, when you lose, you learn something, right? But the biggest thing about losing a deal that people just don't get when I say this is that you get all this future time back that you would have spent on that deal. There's a lot of time that goes into every single deal. And when you lose a deal and you can cut your losses, not spend any of that more future time on that deal, you get, you get that time back. It's the only thing where you get time back. And this makes you so efficient when you understand this. What's up, Michael? How you doing, brother? Um, like you become so efficient when you understand, like when you lose a deal, you get future time back. It, it's an amazing thing. I want you guys to really think about this for a second. When you lose a deal, you get that future time back. Time is the most valuable asset by far. If you lose all your money, you can get it all back tomorrow. If you lose tomorrow, you can't get that back. You can't get time back. Time's the one thing you can't replace. So when you lose a deal, right? You don't have to spend any more time on that specific client or deal or situation. You get time back. The most valuable asset in the world, you get it back that you don't have to spend on that deal anymore. It's amazing. It's, it's like an incredible um, opportunity um, that, that so many people just disregard. They just think what they did was, is they thought about the deal they lost and they, they saw the check they were going to get from the deal and they were already counting that money and I already like putting it in their bank account and then they lost the deal and then they feel like they lost that money and now their bank account's not going to look like what they thought it was going to look like in the next 30 days. And that's just the wrong attitude. Um, you don't have to spend any, what's up Shelby? You don't have to spend any more time on that deal. Mm. And, uh, and you can, you can, uh, use that time and whatever you learn from that deal, whatever mistake you made, or maybe it wasn't even your fault, but maybe there was something that you're going to learn something from every single deal. Use it like, and when you think like that and you're always moving forward and if, if you lose a deal, it's like, okay, cool. I got all this time back. I got this pocket of time back. I got it back. Now I can use that extra time to go create more business and just keep growing, growing, growing. It's amazing. Cause then it's like, you're unstoppable. Everything you do is just positive, right? There's, there's nothing negative happening. Um, Brian Fisher, what's up buddy? How are you, man? So yeah, like I said, guys, my, uh, my guest th this week, he, uh, he, he had a really bad internet connection. His name is Chase Mayer. He was on, uh, Joshua Smith's podcast a while back. And uh, he had a really bad internet connection, so I figured I would just come on here since I was supposed to be live anyway and just spend a, spend a few minutes with you guys and see if you had any questions. I know there's a lot of new agents in the program since I switched over to free. Actually, we've signed up like 1,200 new uh, students since I went free in Zero to Diamond. So it's pretty exciting, and I just wanted to uh, make sure everybody's cool, doesn't have any questions. I got a question on Instagram. How do we create monthly goals when each deal isn't technically in our control? Here's the answer. Guys, listen to this. Okay, I see uh, I, I see I see Matthew there said something. And Joe, and Joe, listen to this, guys. You're gonna love this. Okay, how do we create monthly goals when each deal isn't technically in our control? Here's how you do it. You don't create goals based on results. Don't create goals based on I'm going to sell this many properties. I'm going to get this many listings. I'm going to make this much money, right? All of your goals should be action oriented. I'm going to make this many calls. I'm going to send this many letters. I'm going to do this much Facebook stuff. I'm going to do this many postcards. I'm going to do this many emails. I'm going to do email every week. I'm going to do phone calls three times a week, whatever it is. Your goal should be focused around actions, not results, because you can't control the results. 
So this was a big thing for me. I had to, I, I really went through the ringer on this very depressed because I wanted to make a million dollars in a year. And all I was making was 600 and I was really upset because I thought, you know, what's wrong with me. And so it took me a while and a coach I hired a coach and I actually figured out that I'm thinking about it wrong. You can't control the results. All you can control is your actions. So have your big goals that you want to make a million that you want to do a hundred deals and so on and so forth. But have those kind of in the side of your, of your mind and don't be so focused on that, right? Be focused on it, but be more focused on your actions, your daily actions, weekly actions, monthly actions. Does that make sense, Anjo? I think your name is Anjo. Let's see. Matthew says, just want to shout out a helpful hint you gave in one of your videos for the other peeps to do. I signed up for your weekly email and got it yesterday. Good stuff. I worked on setting up my template today to get it ready to start sending out next week. Good stuff. Thanks again, Ricky. Digging all the insight. Cool, man. Glad you're enjoying it. Craig Cox. What's up, buddy? He says, I did some deals in an area that's about half an hour from my home. But now I'm trying to move my farm area to my own immediate neighborhood. How do I deal with the fact that I haven't done deals in the area that I'm now farming? I bet the answer deals with relationship building. Here's the thing, guys. Here's the thing, um, Craig. When you're trying to bust into a neighborhood um, that you've never sold in, right? Like whenever you're cold calling, and circle prospecting around just listed and just sold. They don't have to be your just listed and just sold. You can say, hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but a house in your neighborhood just sold. Didn't know if there's something I could do to help you. Right. It's the same script. Nothing different. So and from there, you're going to start a conversation. You're going to build a relationship. Right. Maybe they want to do something now. Maybe they want to do something later. Either way it goes, it's your job to make them feel comfortable and to like you more than any other realtor. Right. You have to do your job to 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 create likability between you and those owners. Right. Because they don't care how many properties you sold. Yeah. Some of them look and see, hey, they sold this. They sold that. But if you are if you're an average agent, then, yeah, they're going to look at that and say, oh, he's average and he hasn't sold anything. Not going to deal with him. But if you're super likable, right, if you're super likable and they just want to deal with you because of you, they don't care how many you sold. So work on your skill of being super likable and making people feel comfortable with you. That's how you bust into a neighborhood you've never sold anything in. I could call any place in the world. I could call New York, uh, California. I could call owners anywhere make them feel comfortable and do deals, right? I feel super confident that I could call any neighborhood in the U.S. I could cold call a neighborhood and get and start relationships that turn into deals. Guaranteed. No questions asked. Okay. And I've never sold in those neighborhoods. Never even heard of them. Let's see. Richie says, I do the same technique you use and I love all your tips. Thanks for spreading your time to help. Absolutely, man. Andre, what do you do to overcome those sellers who want to use company like Purple Brick, Redfin, etc.? Andre, man, good question. Excellent question. I've uh, been seeing this kind of a lot. Look, here's the deal, guys. This is not really the beginning. I mean, there's always been discount brokers per se. There's always been people that were, that would like sell by owner, right? And close this door. There's always been uh, owners that would sell by owner. Okay. What's up, Steve? You wonder. Um, and so it's not like this is a new thing, right? Owners have always had the option to sell by owner and skip the commission. Um, and now, you know, there's always been discount brokers. There are more, there, there's more of them now, right? And they're trying to take over with technology and everything. And there's going to be more and more of them, right? Here's the difference. All those discount brokers cannot give the service that you give, right? A lot of them don't answer the phones after five and on the weekends. A lot of them, there's a different um, employee that works each part of the deal, 
you know, like there's a, a listing uh, appointment guy, there's a transaction guy, there's the closer guy, there, there's different people. You don't really ever talk to the same person, right? Because that's the way it's set up. So the service is much, much lower. Um, that's one thing uh, that the service is much, much lower. But here's the thing. Let them go to Redfin, right? Let them go. Um, here's, here's what's going to happen is you do your best to get it. If they still choose Redfin, be their friend. Like we're going after long-term relationships. So if someone decides that they, if you, if you truly care about them and they make the decision to use a discount broker, you should be behind that decision, right? You want what they want. You want, just because they don't choose you shouldn't mean that you say, okay, our relationship's over. Right. If you truly care, if someone around, I've had clients around here do the discount brokers because we have a discount brokers thing where they can basically go for sale by owner and get it on our MLS for like two hundred dollars or something like that. And so um, I've had clients that did that. Right. And so here's what happens when they go to those discount brokers. They go there, they have an experience, they find out how horrible it is, they come back to you. Now they're going to deal with you forever, or they're never going to go back. Um, another part of this is, is if they sell, they're going to sell and then they're going to buy something, right? So you want to maintain the relationship for when they buy something, right? Um, another part of it is referrals, right? You want to maintain the relationship for referrals that's going to come. Um, so there, there's a lot of different angles. And I think if you lose a listing to Redfin, who cares? Because there's an unlimited C, unlimited. There's more than you can ever handle in your life, right? Um, there's no shortage of business. So um, as people go to Redfin and stuff like that, let them do it and keep moving forward. Keep those relationships open, right, for future business and referrals, you know, because they'll probably come back to you, right? So that's kind of what I have to say about it. You guys give me your thoughts. Um, I'm not worried about it. I think that my service is going to overcome any of the discount brokers. That's why they're a discount broker. Do I think that one day soon in the next decade or so, it, it, they might, there may be something come along that actually affects our commission rate? Yes, I do. I think there may be a day where everybody gets 4% because I think Redfin's 1% listing fee and then they give 3% to the buyer broker. So now we're at four. So I think maybe, maybe I don't think Redfin, but maybe something comes along that uh, that creates a situation where we all have to do four percent. Okay, great. I'll do two and two all day long. You know, I mean, not a big deal. It's still a lot of money, right? And that's way on down the road. Way on down the road. So nothing to worry about. You just need to continue building relationships. Whatever agent is going to is going to develop their skills to to become likable and build those relationships and build a huge database of people that know them, like them, trust them. Right. You're going to make it through any of these market downturns, discount broker, you know, uh, deals, um, anything. You know, if you have people skills. Right. And that's what you need to be working on your people skills. How do you make people feel? Do they like you? Right. Michael says abundance mindset. More than you can ever handle. Why do you think I'm coaching for free agents in my market? Telling them every single little thing I know, telling them everything about how I built my business. Not worried about it. They might get a client or two of mine here or there. I'm going to pick up five more while they're doing that. Right. Here's the thing. If I did run into a Ricky Carruth in my market and they started making tons and tons of calls, which there are some agents in my office doing it, they're only going to be able to make calls for a good year or so. And they're probably going to call 10,000 people or something like that before they're so busy that, that they can't make any more calls because I, I, I can't make calls. Like I just can't make them. I'm too busy closing deals. If I do have a chance to make calls, I'm calling past clients because I have so many of them. I need to check in with them. So, you know, my days of the actual cold calls, except for when I'm doing doing them to teach you guys something, 
are pretty much over. What's up, Tony? Let's see. Andre says Redfin three and a half, one to seller, two and a half to buyers. But I agree. Appreciate the info that selling is using me to buy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, like the people that are the people that are selling will use you to buy. You know, refer people to you. Do listen. If you really care about your clients, it doesn't matter, right? You just keep on providing value to them. And if you're doing it to enough people, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to get yours. Right. But if you're just concentrating on the same person, that's what a lot of agents get, get clogged up in their business because they just continue trying to convert that same group of prospects. They just try to keep on just spinning their wheels in that same little group. You have to talk to new people every day have to talk to new people every day. I get so many new people that are just calling me now, right? I've built such a big business. If you listen to Gary Vee, he'll say that what's the best kind of business, right? The best kind of business is to create a business where everybody calls you. And that's what Zero to Diamond is. I've created such a huge business with my weekly email. I made 100,000 phone calls. Everybody I've come in contact with gets a, a weekly email on the same day every week. And now everybody just comes to me and refers people to me and blah, blah, blah. Right. I don't have to chase it. Right. But I work even harder now that I got it to stay on top of all of it so I can close out the, all the deals and take care of everybody. OK, I see Facebook questions. Let me get these Instagram questions. How many sphere of influence calls do I make a day? I don't hardly make any sphere of influence calls until the winter. Like literally, like I'm so busy during the year, I can't really call, make any calls till winter. And then when the market slows down in the winter, like around Christmas and stuff, then that's when I start really trying to reach out to my sphere of influence. Kelly says, do I mail postcards for just listed and new listings? Yes. Every new listing I get, I do a uh, postcard just listed, just sold. Everything I list, everything I sell gets a postcard to the neighborhood or the complex. Craig says, if I have a good email, large list of prospects. Let's see if I have a good email, large list of prospects. Is it worthwhile doing an email prospecting? Is it worthwhile doing email prospecting and then follow up with phone calls? Absolutely, man. What kind of question is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Send them email and uh, follow up with phone calls. Yeah, that's like that's real estate one on one, man. I think you got I think you're onto something there. Andre says, thanks for the info. Robert Smith, thanks for all you do. What's up, Robert Smith? Instagram, let me know if you have any questions. Michael says, do you do any direct marketing? Yeah, I do direct. I have a I have a farm of about 2000 that gets postcards. I've actually kind of scaled back on the postcards. I do them about once every two or three months to my big list of 2000. And then I do postcards every single listing or sell. Let's see what percentage of people opt out of my weekly email. Um, okay. Instagram. Hold on one second. Uh, what percentage of people opt out? I have no idea how many people opt out of my weekly email. It's not a big number. Um, but we do get, I do get some people that opt out, but not, not a big number, but I don't care because all that's doing is just weeding people out that don't want to deal with me or don't like my style or whatever. <clears throat> you know, that's great because now I'm going to concentrate on the people who like what I'm doing and like what I'm sending and like my style. That's the whole name of the game, guys. You want to filter down, you know, the market's this big, right? Let's say a million people in your market, half a million, hundred thousand, whatever it is. OK, you start there and your job is to talk to every single one of them you can and filter down to the group of people who like you, like your style, like your personality, like what you got going on and want to do business with you. All right, cool, cool. Got some Instagram questions. What's up, guys? What do I recommend if I don't have a lot of money? I recommend. Um, you can do a lot, lots of things. You can just talk to everybody, you know, right? I think, I think if I had no money and I couldn't do anything, I would start with talking to everybody I know and say, Hey, 
God just got my license or whatever. Is there anything I could do for you? Start the email list. Get their email. Get them on the weekly email. Emails are free, right? Until you get a big database and have to um, get constant contacts or whatever. <clears throat> then, past that, I would look up. Um, you can look in the tax records and find property owners, and then you can reverse look up their their numbers and stuff online, white pages and stuff like that. And you can call them for free. You can look them look them up for free. You can dial their number on your cell phone for free and call them. Right? You can go to zerodiamond.com and download my phone scripts for free. You can see videos of me making calls and and just you can have a 90 day action plan, all that stuff. And you can go in there and just pick out the things that you can do for free out of what I do and go do them. Let's see. He says I'm doing already doing a lot of expireds. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Keep doing that. Keep doing expireds. Right. Let's see. OK, but I'm, OK, but finding it hard to keep myself busy every day with all the lead generation. I don't understand that, man. You're finding it hard to keep yourself busy every day, all day with lead generation. Not understanding that question, man. You, you can call. It's unlimited. You can call. There's like think about how many property owners are in your area. Right. You can call. I mean, you can't call them all. So how could you not stay busy? calling property owners in your area. Answer me that. Got another question here. How do you find numbers for free? Go to whitepages.com. What is it? Bigfoot.com, Google, right? It It's a lot of work because you have to um, copy and paste or type in the ad, their address and their name and all that stuff, right? So that that's why it makes sense to get Red X Geo Leads for 50 bucks a month and do and do an address and find all the numbers around that address. Right? It's 50 bucks a month. So anybody that's not on Red X, do Geo Leads, 50 bucks. You find 2,000 numbers a month. You can get more if you want them. And uh, call them and tell them that I sent you and you get $200. Uh, the uh, $200 startup fee waived and get after it. Okay, the expired guy, Lulu, Lulu Lamar. I guess what I'm saying is, is other things I can do other than call to work into my daily prospecting. I don't know, man. I think, I think you just need a call. I think if you're that new and you don't have a whole lot going on, I think all you need to be doing is calling calling, getting email addresses, meeting people, finding out what people want to do, sending people properties, showing property, going to listing appointments from your calls, right? I think you should just call until you're so busy you can't make calls. But a weekly email every week on the same day. Go to zero to diamond.com and sign up for my free coaching, 100% free. There's an action plan. There's phone scripts. There's video tutorials. Go there. Okay, Michelle Gordon says 100% agree. Not sure what that was for. I think it was a while back. What's up, Michelle Gordon? Joshua says, Ricky, I found a way to gather local email addresses quickly, but the next step is finding the proper template and design that's easy to read and informative and gets read instead of trash. What do you use to make your email market updates? I use Constant Contacts, um, and to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter. It needs to be short, sweet, to the point. You know, you can look at it and tell if it's pleasing to the eye or not. Right? You can look at it and tell if it's pleasing to the eye. Lulu Lamar, yeah, check it out. And let me know if you have any questions. Um, like, use your own judgment. Like, look at it and say, okay, I like this, so I'm sure my clients would like this. Or if it's too busy, too many words, the pictures aren't good. You know, you know what looks professional and what doesn't look professional. Right. But the thing is, is this is the classic. This is the age old classic. People are trying to make their email perfect before they send it out. No. Start out with something simple like, hey, hope you're having a good week. Here's the list of the new listings. Click here. If you need something, let me know. Have a great day. Right. Um, doesn't have to be anything fancy. And then the next week, add something to it. The next week after that, add something to it and slowly build it into the masterpiece of an email.
but more importantly than what's going out, it needs to go out. And if you haven't, if you're, if you're not sending it out yet, then you're losing, you're leaving money on the table because there could be people in your sphere and your database that want to do something that aren't thinking about you because they're not getting this email from you and you're losing money right now, not sending this email out. Michelle Gordon says Google Docs has a CRM really cheap. HubSpot has a free CRM. Cool. Nice, nice. Joshua said, yeah, yours looks great. Images are good. Cool, man. Thank you. <clears throat> Daniel says, how do I get over a phone writer's block? I'm having a hard time getting back on the phones after being out for a week. Daniel, do you want to make money? I mean, I, I don't I don't understand. Uh, I just I just don't I just don't understand like I don't I I just don't get it. I've never worried about sending postcard or, or making phone calls. It's never been a challenge for me. Like, let's look, here's the thing, guys. Whenever I got into real estate, right, I had been roofing houses with my father for a long time. And so when I got into real estate, um, I, I, I was used to laying shingles all day long, right? So like when I transitioned from roofing houses to, to real estate, I had to figure out in my mind, like my mind was still so hyper productive. Like I had to do stuff. I had to like produce and create results. That's, that's what roofing's all about. You have to finish the job as quick as you can so you get paid. So I had to figure out what in real, what in real estate translated to laying shingles in, in roofing. Like what was the common enough? What, what was the same as laying shingles and roofing in real estate? And so it took me maybe three or four months maybe to figure out that it was phone calls. I knew that if I was making phone calls, that it was the same thing as laying shingles to me. Like in my mind, like, like making phone calls was laying shingles. And so I didn't care what the results were. I was just going to lay as many shingles as I could so that the results just happened. Right. And so I think it boils down to, you know, do, do you want to make money? I mean, what did you do before real estate? You know, Daniel, what did you do before real estate? Or what's the hardest job you ever had? What's up, Sam? Let's see. Craig says, I sent my, hey, Sam, or anybody on Instagram, if you have a question, let me know. This is just a, a coaching session I'm doing because my guest this week had really bad internet connection, so I couldn't do the podcast. So I'm just doing this coaching session. Um, Q&A kind of deal. I know there's a lot of new members in the coaching group, so. Craig says, I sent my second weekly email out today. Looking forward to your thoughts on it. Yeah, I seen that, Craig. I didn't get a chance to like open it up, but I did see that. I'm doing good, Sam. I hope you're doing well. Daniel says he was in the military for 20 years. Excellent, dude. So, okay. If you have a military mindset and you're used to you know, discipline, being on time, doing what you're supposed to do, being held accountable, um, all those things, then I, I guess at that point, let me ask you this. What's holding you back from making the calls? What specifically is holding you back from making these calls? Like, you know that the calls, guys, phone calls are king. Phone calls are king and everything else. Here, here's the king. Here's phone calls. Everything else builds your brand. Right. But you got to have it all. Sam, I'm doing like a coaching session. Q&A coaching session on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so phone calls are king. Everything else builds your brand. Right. What happens is, is everybody gets so busy doing everything except for making calls. Like they want to do the Facebook ads and the open houses and the this and the that. And they get a couple leads and stuff and they start trying to build a business and stuff. If, if you, any realtor really, unless you are like a team leader, you're like a single agent, 
that has made it to the very top has done that by making phone calls. Like I know some guys that really crush it with expires. It's just their thing. And they really, they're really good at it, you know? Um, but I think that, uh, phone calls are king. Everything else is secondary, but you got to do all that secondary stuff to complement the phone calls. You know, if you just do phone calls, you're still going to crush it. But if you do phone calls and all the other stuff, you're going to be an incredible agent. But if you do all the other stuff and not the phone calls, you're going to be average. Just a fact. Daniel, what exactly are you, what exactly is holding you back from the phone calls? What's up, home by Holmes, Holmes Bryson? China Lee Thompson, I love the phones and feel like my voice is right tone, etc. And I like the, the phones, but I struggle with lead conversion. Okay. Tell me, tell me, China Lee, what do you consider a conversion? Okay, because conversion to me is as they tell me no, they're not interested, and I say, hey, okay, do you have an agent that you would work with? And they say no, and I say, okay, I got you. Well, look, I'm sure at some point you're going to want to buy or sell something. I would love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be okay if I stayed in touch? They say yes, and I say, what's your email? They give it to me, and then may, I might ask them to lunch or something so I can meet them. Um, that is a conversion to me, not an appointment, not the listing, not the closing, not the contract. To me, that's not conversion. Convert converting is, is, is making them feel comfortable and kind of establishing that foothold that you are their agent when they decide to do something. Right? So tell me, China Lee, tell me, Okay, you're saying something there. Let me check something here. Hmm. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, let's see. Getting getting a lead from talking to them to an appointment. China Lee, listen to me. That's the wrong strategy. I'm just giving you my opinion. Um, you know, if you're going to try to force them into an awkward situation, they're not interested in doing anything. You know, who are you calling, China Lee? Tell me who your leads are. Are you calling for sale by owners, expired, circle prospecting, buyer leads from the Internet? Who are you calling? I need to know more about your situation. While you're answering that, I'm going to answer Ann Thurman's message. Do I recommend using my cell phone if you're using triple dialer? Worried about return calls, interrupting Mojo, Google Voice is out of local numbers in my state. Here's the thing. <clears throat> Just let, yeah, use, it doesn't matter because you can plug your cell phone number, I think, in as the return call. Um, you can plug your cell phone number as the return call, even if you're using a different phone. So I'm pretty sure you can do that. So it doesn't matter. So yeah, put your cell phone away, use your office number. And, and put your cell phone number as the, the call or ID number that they see. I think that's how that works. I've never done it without my cell phone, though. So whenever somebody calls me back while I'm, while I'm doing it, I just ignore it and I continue calling. Unless I think it's really, really important. You know, like if it's, um, if it's uh, something serious, like a million dollar deal and stuff, then, of course, I'm going to answer. But I try not to let it interrupt my calls. OK, China Lee, <clears throat> she says all of those. Well, there's a big difference, China Lee. Um, I mean, like if it's an expired or something. Listen, it's not about the appointment, right? It's about how many people you make feel comfortable with you and how many emails you get and how many lifelong relationships you set up. OK, that's the game, not appointments. Right. And so what, what's happening is, is is you, we're getting trained by the mainstream real estate trainers out there to set the appointment, go for the close, handle objections, da 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 da. And really, that's just the bad. That's just not a good strategy. I've built my entire business without going after appointments, without closing, without all that stuff. I want them to feel comfortable with me. Comfortable. They're going to buy or sell. Trust me, it's going to happen. It's good, but it's going to be on, in, on their terms and when they want to do it, not when you want them to do it. 
So your job is to be there and to, to make them feel like you're different than all the other realtors because you actually care because you don't care if they buy or sell. You just want to be there if they do. <clears throat> so I think you need to change your mindset around China Lee. Start thinking long term with people. Um, really bring them value. Let them know that you actually care and you don't care. You don't care. You actually care about them, not the deal. And then what will happen is, is magic will happen and you will start to do deals and you're going to build this database that's real. That's real. People are actually going to care about you and refer you and stuff. She says, thanks. I agree. I'm beating myself up because my lead conversion is not what it should be. Yeah. But it's your mindset. Who cares about the appointments? Let's make people feel comfortable with us and let's let's create likability. Let's create real structure and real foundation with with our database. Let's go deep. OK, back to Daniel. He says, I'm not seeing the results in phone calls. If you guys are just tuning in. I've been at it since December. I've gotten a, I've gotten a listing appointment and a bunch of emails. I need to follow. I need to work on my follow up. Daniel, are you doing a weekly email every week on the same day? If not, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Um, by the way, guys, in this group that I'm live on, I posted my weekly email that I do every Wednesday. I'm posting it in the group every Wednesday. So I posted it yesterday for those of you who want to see what I sent out to all my clients. Okay, Caesar said, Ricky, what's a good voice amount to leave when I'm prospecting? This is the biggest, this is the most question. Like, I get this question more than anything else. What's a good voicemail? Voicemail, voicemail. It's crazy. Um, well, I don't do anything special. Like, the voicemail is for branding, in my, in my opinion. And if they call you back, that's just a bonus. So I just say, hey, it's Ricky Crew, Three Makes Orange Beach. Give me a call back about. Tidewater or Ocean House or whatever, you can reach me at whatever. That's what I say. If they call me back, good. If not, at least they heard my name, my company, that I'm real estate. And maybe over time, they'll see that. They'll hear that. They'll see the postcard. They'll see the Facebook ad. They'll start to put all that together. People want to see that realtor, who whatever realtor, they want to see that you're consistent over time. Right? There's a lot of fly-by-night realtors. <clears throat> and what they want to see is that you're going to do, you're going to be there. You're there. Um, there's a lot of them that come in and call. They've only been at it for a year or six months or whatever. And the owners don't know if they're really going to hang in there and really going to, they owners, right. And people in the market, they have seen so many realtors come and go. Like they have seen, they've seen postcards from realtors that aren't realtors anymore. They've, they've had phone calls from realtors that aren't realtors anymore. And so they've seen so many realtors come and go. They're gun shy. They want to see that you're consistent and going to stay in the business and that you're real, that you're going to be a realtor for the long run. Right. Instagram, what's up? If you guys got questions, type it in. I'm just doing a free coaching session right now. All my coaching sessions are free, but I'm doing this one today because my guest um, that I was going to have on the podcast, uh, he didn't have a good internet connection. So we couldn't have them on. Hey, Ricky, the relationship creation is so important. Absolutely. Guys, I'm enjoying this little session. Not a whole lot of people, you know, 21 people, 10 people on Instagram, 21 on Facebook. Nice little tight group. Um, let me know if you guys have any more questions for me. I just wanted to do this just to do something because my guests couldn't uh, couldn't make it um, and just make sure you guys didn't have any questions. Um, my entire goal now with Zero to Diamond moving in this different direction is, is just to help as many agents as I possibly can. I truly care about the industry. I truly want to help reduce the failure rate in the industry. And I feel like most of the mainstream coaching is uh, is too high pressure. And I just want to introduce the low pressure side of the business through it, through example. Right. Because I'm doing it. I built my entire business low pressure, you know, and I, I want I want people to know that you don't have to be high pressure to be a great salesperson. 
you you don't have to be high pressure to be a top producer right you don't have to do for sale by owners and expires to be a top producer you don't have to do internet leads or facebook to 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 lead to to be a top producer you don't have to right there are other ways to do it and that's why i'm here because i want to introduce the fact that you can call you can circle prospect people you can circle prospect them and not even ask them if they want to buy or sell anything create a lifelong relationship with them in one phone call and a weekly email every week forever and they'll call you back when they get ready that's my game um, you can download my phone scripts at zero to diamond.com and my entire game plan is right there for you you guys really need to do the 30-day jump start that's on there it's it's a it's a coaching call you can listen to um, there's week one week two week three week four then there's a second 30-day jump start it's incredible it will really get your daily weekly monthly habits in line and it's also very motivational and get you fired up let's see China Lee says glad you came on and appreciate you very much needed this you're welcome China Lee Bruce what's up buddy Brian you're a true coach thanks no problem Brian okay Instagram let's see what it got let's see what it got money Griffin When's your best prospecting time? I like to do nine to 12 because my mind is the sharpest. That's when I want to make my calls when I'm the sharpest. Um, but a lot of people have more success with people answering the phone after hours, like four to seven or whatever. And on, on Saturdays, everybody kind of has their own thing. I think the biggest thing is, is just do it and not really worry about when you think people are going to be there to answer. Just make the calls. Um, you know, I've made all my calls between nine and 12. Other agents make it, you know, one to four, some agents make it four to seven, some agents make it on Saturdays. <clears throat> the truth of the matter is it all works, right? So just find out what works best for you, try them all if you want to and figure it out. But I wanna be the sharpest I can be when I'm making my calls. Okay, I see your questions on Facebook. Give me one second. Okay. Let's see. Okay, who impresses me as an agent? Wow, this is a really tough question. Hmm. Who impresses me as an agent? I don't know, man. I mean, there are some de definitely some some guys out there. I mean, who impresses me as an agent? Huh. That's a head scratcher. You know, to be honest with you, I really like those guys on Million Dollar Listing. Love them or hate them, those guys are working. Those guys are working, man. Right? Good question, man. Okay, main focal point of making a hundred thousand your first year as an agent. One, hundreds of hundreds of phone calls to collect emails every day to build database and weekly emails. Am I missing anything? No, you're not. You will make $100,000 if you make hundreds of calls every week, collect email addresses and do a weekly email the same day each week forever. And once you build that database and get all that in place, then, then you can do other things. You can work on Facebook stuff, internet stuff, different things, right? But that needs to be your base. Realtor Brian Torres, 402 calls made today, 45 contacts, two ads to the CRM. Keep dialing. Yeah, dude. Absolutely, man. Your numbers will get better as time goes on. Like when you're making your calls, don't worry about your results, right? Worry about the fact that you're making calls or not. The results will come. Keep making them. You'll get better. Miami Star Real Estate, do you recommend call on Saturdays? Yeah, call, call on Saturdays. Give it, give it a try. See what you think. Every area is different. Every market is different. You know, just try it and see what you think. Money Griffin. Thanks, Ricky. Cool. Okay. Back to Facebook. Daniel's got to run. Good to see you, bro. Matthew says, Ricky, tell again who are the highest quality leads and why. Okay. The highest quality leads are property owners because they not only sell, but they also buy. They're your best buyers. That's why I don't like to ask them if they want to buy or sell or, hey, do you want to sell or do you want to buy? I like to just say, hey, what can I do to help you? 
Now you can try different angles. You can say, hey, have y'all thought about selling? Or hey, I got a good deal, blah, blah, blah. Right? Um, so um, like, let's see. Okay, another thing about them is they're unlimited, right? So you have an unlimited amount of the highest quality leads in every single market. And you, they're unlimited. You can't call them all. You can't call all the property owners. So why would you talk to anybody else? I had a coaching call today. A guy called and wanted to know what to say to this long list of buyer leads that his team leader had handed off to him, wanted him to call those buyer leads, right? And I said, okay, well, look, I'll tell you what to say to those people. But the first thing is, is why would you call them when you have an unlimited amount of property owners you know, that you can call. I mean, why, why would you call buyer leads? And he said, well, they're just sitting there. Well, so are the property owners. They're sitting there ready for you to call them and talk to them and do deals. They'll buy or sell, right? Not just buy. And he said, well, some of these are buyers. Yeah, some of them, right? But when you call property owners, all of those are property owners, right? They're just better. They're just more efficient. It's just better, right? It's just, just better, right? So, so be smart, guys, is what I'm saying. Uh, Instagram, as a new agent, where do you think money should be invested? Ooh, maybe yourself first, you know, invest in some, you know, um, books and, you know, try to learn the business, so on and so forth. Um, but I think Red X Geo Leads, I think that's probably like the best thing I would say is in the world because you can get all the numbers of property owners and start calling away. Right. I think if I had nothing and I could only afford a hundred dollars a month or something, I would do fifty dollars a month Red X Geo leads and just call property owners. <clears throat> okay, Robert Smith says, What determines a neighborhood for you that you decide to mail to? I just picked out, you know, some of the higher end stuff, some of the mid range. I just picked out stuff that's like stuff that's like three to five hundred and buildings I've sold in. And then I pick like, uh, you know, up to like a million. I think I have stuff that's a million and a half. So it, it's random and it's not really a, it's not really a, uh, oh, hey, listen, look, guys, I'll tell you the truth too. The new agent question, what should you invest in? I really like Perfect Storm, Joshua Smith's thing. I was really looking hard at it. You know, it's got the website, it's got the CRM, it's got the Facebook thing. <clears throat> I think that that's really cool too. Matthew says the ZT site, ZTD site is priceless, guys. Listen to the recorded calls. Many of these questions are answered there. You are absolutely right, Matthew. Cassandra says when you're cold calling and people are trying to call you back, you get you 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 stated you ignore the call. Do you call them back at the end of your calling sessions? Yes, you call them back. You know, you call them back. You want to see what's up. David Booty is in here in the house. I know one agent who impresses me listening, bro. Okay, David or uh, Bruce says, Ricky, your video about forget the small things is the best video. Forget the small things. Let me see what that is. Let me go. Let me go to YouTube real quick and see what you got. Paste and go. Oh, yeah, the motivational video. Absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a good one. I, I like that. I actually did that myself. I took scenes out of the daily grind and I did the music and I did the little the little rant. I'm gonna do another one of those tonight. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it tonight. I don't know what it's gonna be about, but I'm gonna do it. So I'm pretty excited about that. Brian Fisher uses Perfect Storm and he loves it. Cool guys. I don't see any more questions right this second. So uh, check it out. I got 14 properties under contract. I'm working on four more. I'm negotiating four deals right now. Two of them look pretty good. Two of them do not look pretty good, but you never know. I'm going to keep trying to make them work. <clears throat> I'm showing property tomorrow. I have a lunch appointment. Um, I have a closing. Um, so just grinding away, man. Just trying to make it all happen. Um, just trying to share my success with you guys so that you guys can can follow in my footsteps and just give it everything you got. That's all I'm asking, guys. Just give it everything you got. Try to be smart. 
Brent says, what do you say? Uh oh. Looks like my Instagram ended abruptly. Um, what do you say when you reach another agent when calling? I say, what's up? How are you doing? How are sales? You know, you haven't got any good listings. Let's do lunch. What can I do to help you? Right? Guys, don't let little things stump you. Smooth right over everything. Don't let anything stump you. Let it all just smooth right over. That's what it's all about. Okay, check this out, guys. While I got a second, I don't see any questions. Um, please subscribe to my YouTube if you're not already. And number two, please follow me on Instagram and turn your post notifications on where you get notified every time I post. When I post, like it and comment three, hashtag 321 Club. That's going to give you a chance to win like a one-on-one -on -one call with me. I'm doing those every day. I'm picking winners and I'm calling people every day and answering questions one-on-one. -on -one. So do that. That's going to help me with my Instagram engagement and YouTube engagement. So I'm doing all this for free. So that's all I ask of you guys. And um, that's going to help me grow my personal brand. Um, next week, I'm going to Ocala, Florida to do a speech for Young Professionals Network. It's going to be super cool. I'm really excited. Um, it's going to be really good. Blake's coming with me. We're going to have fun. Leave Tuesday, um, do the speech in the morning for breakfast, come back Wednesday. And then the following week, April 1st, uh, Easter Sunday, I'm going to New York to have a meeting with Gary Vee and his whole team that Wednesday. Super stoked about that. So look, guys, if you're in Ocala, you're in the Florida area, or if you're in New York, uh, I'm going to do a meetup um, in Ocala Tuesday night somewhere. I'll announce it. Uh, and then I'm going to definitely get up with all you guys that's in New York <clears throat> that following week. So I'm really looking forward to all that stuff. A lot of big things. I think the Gary V meeting is going to be life changing. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be just specifically speaking about how to blow my personal brand up. Bottom line, we're not going to really, we're not going to talk about real estate. We're going to, I'm going to talk, tell them all about it, but um, that's not what I'm there for. I'm there to get advice on how to become the highest demanded real estate speaker in the world over the next two years. And, um, you know, to where I can actually help and make a big difference. Okay. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you, guys. Um, sorry we couldn't get the guest on, but we'll, we'll get him back. And if you guys need anything at all, we'll see. Matthew says, Gary V. Rocks, man. You guys will kill it. Love to see a small video clip. I'm going to video the entire day if they'll let me. I'm pretty sure they'll let me. I'm going to video the entire day. I'll be at VaynerMedia for 10 hours, and I'm going to video every second of it if I can. I'll have my video camera. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a YouTube video of that. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> really looking forward to that. All right, guys, if you need something, get at me. I'm here. Uh, it is 5:30, but, um, I'm going to be working for another couple hours here at the office. Um, crushing some stuff and, uh, much love to you guys. You know, I just want to motivate you guys to just try to reach your full potential. I want you to overwhelm yourself with business so you can figure out where your breaking point is and how much you can handle and then throttle back and stay right there with as much as you can handle at all times. That's the only way you're going to get to your full potential. Compound your efforts over time where the little things add up to something huge um, over time and just give it all you got. That way, you know, when you're older, you can look back and say, I gave it everything I had. I'm completely satisfied. There's none of this. What it could have, should have. You know that you gave it everything you got and, you know, <clears throat> you, you just you just know it in your heart and you don't have to you don't have to second guess yourself that maybe I could have done this or maybe I could have done that. Right. You'll know that you gave it everything you got and you can live with that. Right. 
regret, I think, is my most feared thing. I don't want to get older and look back and say, I wish I would have done that. That's why um, that's why I've done everything in my life. That's why I played football. That's why I got into real estate at a young age. Um, that's why I did jujitsu and MMA. Um, that's why I'm doing this now. That's why I wrote books. That's if I think of something, I think I need to do that and I need to do it right now before it's too late. So I think that's something that really drives me is fear of regretting later that I should have done something, you know, that I should have done. So with that, I'm going to leave you guys with it. Have a good rest of the day. Crush it tomorrow. Finish the week strong. Talk to you guys soon. Much love. Peace.